What is going on everybody and welcome to part 5 of our deep learning with neural networks, TensorFlow, and of course Python tutorial series. In this tutorial what we're going to be talking about is actually taking what we've learned, which is a really simple example of a deep neural network on some kind of prepackaged data for us, and attempt to apply that exact same deep neural network onto data that is not prepackaged for us. So probably the first hurdle that you're going to come across after you get through going through like say a demo or something like that on tensorflow.org or on Theano or whatever you have, um, that first hurdle is just simply going to be, okay, now that I know how this model works, I want to apply it to some data. Shoot, how do I do that? <laughs> so, so that's what we're going to be kind of doing here is actually applying this to a realistic data set or at least applying this in a realistic way to a data set because the MNIST data set is a realistic data set. Anyway, uh, so the data that we're going to be working with, I mean, you can work with another data set if you want, uh, go for it. Uh, but we're going to be working with uh, positive and negative sentiment data sets and just see what kind of, if we can get a positive or negative sentiment kind of classifier going on here. Uh, so to begin, um, there will be the in the text-based version of this tutorial. So if you don't know, I all code and everything that goes to the text-based version of this tutorial. So you can always go to uh, data analysis here, then machine learning, and then this is the machine learning course. And then if you scrolled all the way to the bottom, uh, this tutorial will be somewhere down here. I'm filming it, therefore this tutorial is not yet released, so I can't click on it. But anyway, if you go there, you'll click on click there, and there should be two buttons there: one for the positive file and the negative file. But here they are as well. So it's just a two files, two text files that are going to contain some strings that are both positive and negative strings of text. So I'm going to go ahead and just right click, uh, save page as, and I'm just saving them to H desktop TF tuts. So that'll be pause.txt, and then this one I'm going to save as, interesting, save as, there we go, uh, neg.txt, good. And then we can just pull one up real quick just to show you. Um, but they're about a little over 5,000 lines total. Uh, so I'll scroll to the very, very bottom here. Whoop. <clears throat> there we go. It's about 5,300 lines long. Um, same thing with the negative file. You can take my word for it or look at it if you want. So our plan is to take the, this is our data set, right? And, and there's really um, a few things that are should be kind of uh, curious to you as far as how we're going to progress and that is one um, this is word data these are strings these aren't vectors uh, so you can't immediately make a string a tensor so uh, the first thing the first problem we have are these are this is a text and we need to convert it into some sort of numerical form also uh, these strings are not of equal length. Okay, so converting words to numerical form, you would maybe do a back of words model or something like this, and where you give each word an ID. So the first word we come across, simplistic, that's ID one, silly, ID two, and three, tedious, four, and so on, and you just give each word a unique ID. The problem is this uh, string here has basically four words, but this string has, uh, you know, I don't know, ten or something. Okay, so those are different length vectors and that's not acceptable we have to send in the exact same length of vector every time through our neural network or at least this neural network there are neural networks that we might talk about down the line uh, where you can actually do kind of sequence to sequence stuff where they don't actually have to be the same length um, or and use bucketing and all this kind of stuff but anyways for now uh, it's kind of a rule <laughs> that the vectors input all has to be exactly the same uniform uh, size and shape so that's our problem, and so the, what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a lexicon of uh, words, and a lexicon is just a dictionary or your vocabulary of words that you know. And so we will use this bag of words model where each word basically has an ID, okay, in this case it'll be an index. Uh, and then we're going to kind of incorporate this, not necessarily one hot, but you could call it a hot array or something. So let me go ahead and uh, create a new document here. <clears throat> and we're going to call this uh, create sentiment feature sets dot pi. And I'll go ahead and open that with sublime and just kind of explain how this is going to work. So first to create your lexicon, you're going to use all the data sets that we have. So like, let's say our entire data set um, has the word, has the font, like, we only have chair, table, spoon, 
and television. That's our lexicon array. So after we go through all of the documents and calculate, let's say, all the unique words, these are all of the unique words that we found in all of our documents, and that's what we're going to use as our global lexicon. And then we have a new sentence that comes through, and that sentence is, I pulled the chair up to the table. Okay, and that is going to now have to be converted, right? And so the first step that we're going to have is we're going to say, okay, we have this lexicon will be um, mp.zeros of the len of our lexicon, whatever that is, which is up here, so it'd be four, right? Yeah, four. Um, and then we're going to turn on each of these elements um, according to which index it is in this lexicon if it exists. So that's probably really confusing, but initially this will just be a zero, 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 right? And then we go through and we say, okay, does chair, or like, I guess we could say I, does I exist in this lexicon? No, pulled, no. The, no, chair, yes, it does. So we have chair and the index of chair in our lexicon is what, zero, right? So the zeroth index down here is now a one, up. Nope, we don't have that. Two, no, the, no, table. Yeah, we do have that. And that index is a one. So the first -th index down here, one. So now, converted to a vector in this sort of bag of words model that we're using, this is now our vector for this specific sentence. And now we're going to do that against all of our sentences, and our lexicon will be created off of our entire data set, not just four random words I pulled out of my you know what. So anyways, we will close this out and we'll just go ahead and save this. And what we're going to do is kind of begin working through this. And to start, we are going to be using NLTK. If you do not have NLTK, uh, go ahead, control alt T for terminal, pip three, install and NLTK. I'm move my mic. It's getting in my way. Okay. So once you've installed NLTK, what you're going to want to do is go Python three, import NLTK and then go NLTK.download and then choose D and then all and you're just gonna want to download everything you could specifically download the exact things that we use but I I kinda think it's kinda silly uh, this might take a while it might take up to like 20 minutes or something um, but anyway well uh, you can pause it and then continue on once you have that so uh, I'm gonna control C uh, quit cool <clears throat> So once you have NLTK, you're going to be ready to begin working on this um, Python file. So I'm going to come back over here now and I'm going to go import NLTK. We're going to from NLTK.tokenize, we're going to import, import, <laughs> import, imp oh my gosh, <laughs> I can't even say it legitimately, word tokenize. And uh, just in case you're curious, if you want to know more about NLTK and working with language and natural language processing, you can go to pythonburger.net, data analysis, and then down here is natural language processing. So in a moment here, we're, going to, we're talking right now about tokenizing, which is a really simple concept. And then later on, we're going to be very quickly talking about lemmatizing, which is a little more complex, but a very simple concept still. But if my explanations aren't doing it for you, you can always come back here and you might want to start with stemming and then go to lemmatizing. But anyway, regardless, um, just letting you know, if you need more information, it's available. So word tokenize, all word tokenize does is takes a sentence that, you know, I pulled the chair up to the table and just instead it separates all the words for us. So I and, and pulled and the and chair and up and so on. It just tokenizes the words by like, it just says, okay, this is an element, this is an element, this is and so on. Okay, so that's word tokenize. Uh, then what we're going to do is from nltk.stem, we're going to import word uh, net lemmatizer. So it's 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 a very lemmatizing is a very similar operation to stemming, uh, and it's kind of the same concept. It's the idea is that uh, like for consider for like sentiment reasons, um, or just consider like word meaning reasons. Running, ran, run. These all basically are the exact same word. So you might as well just take all of those and call it run. Okay. <clears throat> so. Um, what stemming would do is remove ing's and ey's and y's and all this kind of stuff and, and ed's and all that. But when you stem something, it doesn't necessarily create like a legitimate word that you could look up on WordNet, for example. Uh, but lemmatizing will it, it makes it a, an actual word that has a true meaning that you could look up in a dictionary. Um, so, anyways, we're going to be using that. Obviously, again, for sentiment analysis, like the question is, you might be like, well, doesn't tense matter? You know, because you can come up with some things like. Um, 
I like this product or product versus I used to like this product. Okay, the one thing is positive, one thing is negative, right? And so, or I liked this product, right? Uh, so tense does matter. Uh, it's just that um, generally tense matters in a different sense. Like, so when you're just trying to figure out meaning and something like that, you would go through and lemmatize everything. But then when you're trying to like actually figure out like uh, what what's being said here for real, you might actually care what the original word was. We're not going to worry about going that far in depth here. Um, but anyway, so... <laughs> We'll move off lemmatizing for now. Um, now what we're going to do is import numpy as np. NP, you jerk. Uh, we're going to import random because we're going to need to shuffle this data at some point. We're going to import pickle so we can save it at some point. From collections, we're going to import counter because we want to count some stuff at some point. And that should be it. So now we're going to specify our lemmatizer as being a uh, word net lemmatizer. And then we're going to say how many lines. And for now, I'm just going to say this. But um, you know, each document here has about 5,000 lines. And if you're like sometimes on these kind of um, processing heavy tutorials, people will post like, I'm getting this error. It's this memory error. And if you get a memory error that looks like that, um, you ran out of RAM. And maybe later on, you ran out of VRAM. But for now, as long as we're using CPU TensorFlow, uh, this means you ran out of RAM. So our model, and actually really the training data, but our model will also be put into RAM here. Um, you know, like let's say you've got, you know, you've got three layers. Each layer is 1,000 cells. That's 3,000 total cells that might have a vector in them, or at least something is in them, plus your entire data set if that's in your memory and so on. So the larger your data set, the larger or the more RAM you're going to take up. So if you want it, one thing you could do is, first of all, you could use less layers in the neural network, less nodes in the layer, okay, um, and then also just less data, uh, and you won't hit this memory error. Now, accuracy will go down, and as I'm going to hopefully show you and illustrate to you throughout these coming videos, that the main value in a neural network, or the main the main way to extract value from a neural network is to feed it just insane amounts of data. So you, this is the last thing you want to do, but if obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's not reasonable to be running large neural networks, um, or really running neural networks on like a CPU or something like that. It's just, you can learn, but it's not, you're not going to get very far. So anyways, um, that's that. And then now what we're going to actually start doing is building uh, our functions that are going to kind of go through this data. But I um, think I'll go ahead and save that for the next tutorials, simply because we covered a lot of kind of theory and stuff in this one. But if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or whatever, feel free to post them below. Otherwise, stay tuned to the next video. Thanks for watching.